The altitude selection knob is located in the lower left corner of the multifunction display, or MFD, and has the letters ALT above it. The knob is composed of an outer section of the knob and an inner section of the knob. Turning the outer section of the knob to the right increases the reference altitude located on top of the vertical tape on the primary flight display or PFD. It increases by 1,000 foot increments. Turning the outer section of the knob to the left decreases the reference altitude by 1,000 foot increments. Turning the inner section of the knob to the right increases the reference altitude by 100 foot increments. Turning the inner section of the knob to the left decreases the reference altitude by 100 foot increments. The reference altitude corresponds to the altitude bug located on the left side of the vertical tape and will display if it is within range of the altitude range displaying in the vertical tape and will be seen moving up and down the tape as you adjust the reference altitude setting with the altitude selection knob. The heading bug will disappear if it falls outside of that range. Let's go through some scenarios for how all of this works in flight. Let's first talk about holding at a certain altitude that differs from what the current reference altitude is. Let's say you are flying with the autopilot off and have set your initial desired altitude to 3000 feet MSL as the reference altitude using the altitude selection knob but you have decided to level off at 2,000 feet MSL instead. There is an ALT key located on both the PFD and MFD that will allow you to hold at a certain altitude. When you press it, you will see ALT in the PDF display. You may think that by pressing the ALT key at the target altitude, that that is enough, but it isn't. The altitude is not holding at that level, especially if you don't have the trim set to hold at that altitude. What is missing is the autopilot is not activated. So let's try the scenario again, but this time we will remember to set the autopilot at the right time. First, we will target 2000 feet MSL as we did before. Instead of pressing the ALT key first, and then the AP or Autopilot key, I recommend pressing the AP key to activate the Autopilot first when you are near the target altitude, so you only have to deal with the ALT key when you reach the target altitude. From now on, I will refer to the ALT key or ALT key as the Altitude key although you could also call it the altitude hold key. Notice when I press the altitude key near 2000 feet MSL, the altitude holds steady because the autopilot was already active. You can use this same approach for a descent as well when you have the autopilot off initially. Now what if we are in altitude hold mode with the autopilot on and we want to change altitudes by either climbing or descending. One of the more common ways to do this is to use the VS or vertical speed button and the nose up or nose down buttons. First, turn the altitude selection knob to the desired target altitude. In this case, I will target 3500 feet MSL because I want to ascend or climb, not descend. Then click the VS button. Click the nose up or nose down button depending on whether you are ascending or descending to the target altitude.
Notice when we near the target altitude, the altitude hold mode automatically activates. We did not have to press the altitude button. This time let's do a descent to 2500 feet MSL. As we talked about earlier, we will turn the outer section of the altitude selection knob to the left until we see 2500 feet MSL. The plane will not go anywhere until we program the Garmin G1000 to do the descent. I will do that now. As we get close to our target altitude, notice once again that the altitude hold mode, as indicated by ALT in the PFD, comes on automatically and the plane automatically leveled off at our target altitude. Let's look at another scenario where we want to take off and level off at 2500 feet MSL. Well, we can do this manually, we can have the autopilot handle this at the right time. We want to be careful to not set the autopilot too early until we are safely above the ground. That way we can react if something unexpected happens. We will climb to about 800 feet AGL or above ground level in this example, but you can go higher before setting the autopilot if you wish. First, before takeoff, we will turn the outer section of the altitude selection knob to the right. Then we will turn the inner section of the altitude selection knob to the right until we have 2,500 feet as the reference altitude. For the Spirit of St. Louis Airport, ground elevation is at 463 feet MSL, so we will round that up to 500 feet and add 800 feet to that, which is 1300 feet MSL. So we will not want to activate the autopilot until we have reached 1300 feet. We will now take off. Now that we've reached 1300 feet, we can activate the autopilot. You can use the nose up or nose down buttons to make adjustments to your climb rate. As we get close to our target altitude, notice once again that the altitude hold mode, as indicated by ALT in the PFD, comes on automatically and the plane automatically leveled off at our target altitude. Cystic off the air right now, leaving my airspace frequency change approved. Now let's look at another scenario where, whether we are climbing or descending using the autopilot, we just want to level off at whatever altitude we want. In this example, we are climbing and we want to level off at 4,000 feet MSL. All we need to do when we get close to that altitude is press the altitude button and the plane will level off. Notice the altitude hold mode displays in the PFD. 
subscribe to this channel to learn more.